All right. Uh, this is just an introduction to solving quadratic equations. What we're going to be doing in this lesson is looking at um, the four methods to solving quadratic equations. Uh, the first thing is, what is solving quadratic equations? Uh, solving quadratic equations is essentially solving for when a particular quadratic function is equal to zero. Uh, or in other words, a few different things uh, of understanding around that is when a quadratic function is equal to zero, uh, that is related to, for example, the x-intercepts of the function, which are also known as the zeros of a function, or the function's roots. So those are all synonyms. Uh, we're going to look at the exact same problem four different ways, uh, and this is a really brief introduction to everything that we're going to be doing uh, in this particular unit. So the four methods to solving quadratic equations are graphing, factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula, uh, which can be seen here in the four different colors. Uh, so first of all, graphing. When we're solving the equation x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0, we're essentially trying to find out where the function uh, y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 5 crosses the x-axis, or, or where are the x-intercepts. In order to do this, uh, there's many ways to do it by graphing. You could use a table of values. You could do a variety of other ways. Uh, I'm going to solve this by completing the square. So <clears throat> I'm going to do this pretty quickly here. Uh, so as you can see, our completed square is y is equal to 1, which isn't a necessary coefficient there, uh, times x minus 3 squared minus 4. If I was to graph this, our vertex is at 3 and negative 4, and since a is equal to 1, it is our typical y equals x squared shape. So it looks somewhat like this. So in this case, you can see that the values of x that make this function equal to 0 are x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. Okay. Uh, second method, solving by factoring. The exact same question, we're going to get the exact same answers. Uh, if I was to factor this, I would be thinking of two values that multiply to 5 and add to negative 6 uh, in this particular uh, case because this is ax squared plus bx uh, plus c is equal to 0 where a is equal to 1. So uh, in this particular case, our factors are x minus 1 and x minus 5. So if x minus 1 is equal to 0, that would give us one particular solution of x equals 1. And in order for x minus 5, that factor to equal 0, if we solve algebraically, we would get an answer or a solution of x equals 5. So as you can see, we're getting the exact same solution, 1 and 5. Uh, method number three is completing the square. So if I borrow, which I will do, uh, this completed square from the graphing method, uh, we'll be left with 1 times x minus 3 squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Now we can algebraically isolate x. Let me show you how to do that. If we add 4 to both sides, we're left with 1. Uh, times x minus 3 squared is equal to 4. You could divide by 1, which is inconsequential. Next step is to take plus or minus the square root because a positive and a negative value squared equals the same thing. So we're left with, these two cancel out, we're left with x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 2. And after I add 3, this leaves me with two possible solutions. Uh, this here can be represented by 3 plus 2 or 3 minus 2. That's what the plus or minus means. It literally means either adding 2 or subtracting 2. So we get answers of x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 1. The exact same two solutions that we've seen throughout. Uh, the fourth method is called the quadratic formula, which is where we need to substitute the values, must be in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, but we substitute the value of a equaling 1, b equaling negative 6, and c equaling 5 into this formula, uh, which can be found uh, wherever you might look for it. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm going to substitute a is equal to 1, 
b is equal to negative 6 and c is equal to 5 into the function, uh, leaving us with the formula, leaving us with x is equal to negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5 all over a denominator of 2 times 1. Uh, as I simplify this, I get 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 20 all over a denominator of 2. So it's x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 16 all over 2, which is x is equal to 6 plus or minus 4 over 2, which, as we learned in the previous example, plus or minus literally means there's two cases. Your two cases are 6 plus 4 over 2, which simplifies to 5, and 6 minus 4 over 2, which simplifies to 1. Those are the four methods of solving quadratic equations. Uh, advantages and disadvantages of each are listed below. Uh, advantages to graphing is that it's a visual method, so it's really easy to visualize where those points are. Disadvantages are that it can be difficult to graph, and also if it's not whole numbers, you cannot determine exact values from the graph. Uh, advantages of factoring is it can be done quickly if it's factorable. Disadvantages is that it can be difficult to factor, and quadratic equations are not always factorable. Uh, completing the square. The advantages are that it is always possible to solve by com completing the square. The disadvantages are that it can be time-consuming and a little bit difficult. As far as the quadratic formula is concerned, the advantages of solving using the quadratic formula is, again, that it's always possible. Uh, also, that it's relatively straightforward, you're just substituting values into a formula. Uh, the disadvantage is that there are lots of opportunities for making mistakes while you're simplifying, uh, and we'll see that later on.